Jeff, and I want to talk a little bit about the AAF workflow between Media Composer exporting a sequence and getting it into Adobe Premiere Pro. You'll see I have both open at the same time, and I've got a sequence on my timeline in Media Composer. A couple things I want to point out about the sequence in Media Composer. I've got some keyframes in the audio. I've got some dissolves, although I think that they are not actually a dissolve. I think that the, the head, the, these are a fade from or fade to. Let me just take a quick look. Yeah, it's a dissolve ending a cut or starting a cut and on both sides. I have no titles because titles aren't going to come across. Some basic stuff like dissolves will come across from Media Composer. I want to talk a little bit about the media. The media you're seeing, all this stuff is XDCAM MXF files that have been linked via AMA. They have not been imported into Media Composer, but this audio has. The big message about Media Composer's media itself is that everything will link up pretty much okay except for DNxHD MXF media. Again, the appendices reflects this. It'll handle all the AMA stuff, QuickTime files. It'll handle uh, MXF files that are not specific to Avid's own internal DNxHD codec. And it's just that it's an MXF format. If it was a QuickTime codec, if, if, if it, you had brought in MX, DNxHD files via QuickTime, you'd be fine with talking to Premiere Pro. So let's see the actual steps. File menu, we're going to do an export. I'm going to go here under options. I want to make sure I have an AAF selected. I need to use the edit protocol. And I'm just going to link to exported media for both video and audio. Once I've done this, I'm going to say save. I'm going to put it somewhere I can find. I'm going to call it Desert Montage. I've saved one earlier, so I'm just going to end up overwriting it. And then we're done with Media Composer, although po I'll point out that it creates its own separate sequence for this export. We cannot bring across a project, and if you wanted to do that, you might build a AFF file of just all the footage on a bin by bin basis by dropping them to the timeline. Okay, so here I am in Premiere Pro. I'm gonna go ahead, double click to import. And when I do this, I'm gonna go to the spot that I used before that I put that AAF file in. Uh, it should be right here. There's that AAF. And when I bring this in, it's gonna go ahead and start trying to build everything back and give me a report of what didn't work. And I'm gonna say import. It told me everything came across, but there was a video dissolve that it had a problem with because it's not supported and it was replaced by a cross dissolve. That's no big deal. I'm happy with that. All my cuts and footage are coming across. So all that remains to do now in Premiere Pro is the link up our material. I have my sequence in here. None of it's online, of course. And all I'm going to do is take the entire bin that represents the AAF and I'm going to say link. Now, Media Composer keeps its material in two spots. Well, one spot, really. It's going to keep it on the root level of a hard drive. And in this case, I happen to have this in this media folder. You can see there's the stock footage it's looking for. This is a piece of audio. It's an MXF. I'm going to go ahead and say, bring those in. It finds both of them. And now it's looking for the XD cam that I used AMA for. That happens to be on my desktop. And I'm going to tell it just to match the exact name. There's the first one. And now it's going to go ahead and start linking up all the XDCAM files. It builds the caches. Everybody comes online. You can see here's my Media Composer sequence here in Premiere Pro. My dissolves at the head and tail. Let's zoom in a little bit. It missed my dissolve at the head, but it got my dissolve at the tail of the show. And my audio. Let's make that full screen. Let's add our clip keyframes. Let me zoom out just a little bit. Let's not show the waveform. You can see my keyframes came across as well. So we get from Media Composer audio keyframe information dissolves and not much else but we can at least get a project back and forth and again i'll refer you to the appendices for specific information for what does and doesn't work